Breathing oxygen, he breathes in helium, yeah, you know, this is it. Yo, people respect me because I've got bars now. They expect me to go hard now. But I still look like I was born wild and sound like a really, really small child. <laughs> Big E, it's time for the Battle of Winterfell, Big E. I know. Du -du -du. Uh, all right, that bit was cool where all the all the flaming uh, swords went out. Jesus. The cat's gone to get a better perch. Oh, hello. home from the open mic I am trying to find my key I'm a little bit drunk ready for drunk do you think the cat will be inside let's find out okay here we go we've got the key oh it's going down somewhere down here Jesus Christ I cannot see a thing should have used the flash here we go big oh hello doing down there oh hello oh yes very nice very nice today is my one year anniversary of being vegan so I baked a cake and here comes Biggie because he can sense that there is a cake if you fuck up my cake cat I will not be happy hello you sitting on my guitar case all right I'm gonna cut into my cake buddy all right here we go I'm gonna cut in, cut me a slice off. Oh, it's exploded a bit. Oh, it's also hot. Anyway, I'm gonna go and eat it. Yo, it's uh, Wednesday. I haven't, I realized I was, was editing this and I realized I forgot to shoot uh, an intro. So hi, and welcome to this week's uh, weekly vlog or usually weekly vlog. I do have some more books to report on, but currently they're in this pile because I need to film my wrap-up. 
So I'm going to do my wrap up first, I think. Um, I'd, well, actually, no, we can do a quick update. So, since my last video, I've read these two, which are Darth Vader and Son and Vader's Little Princess by Jeffrey Brown. They're just very cute, sort of, little Star Wars books, um, with these little kind of illustrations in. I actually heard about these from Madman Reads and Rocks. I saw them on his channel, and I thought they looked cool. So I picked the first one up, and um, before I even got, like, I ordered that online, and before I even got a chance to read it, I saw that um, I saw Vader's Little Princess in a charity shop, so then I picked that one up as well. Uh, yeah, enjoyed them both probably, like, four, 4.5 stars. 4.5 for... Uh, for Vader and Son and four for uh, Vader's little princess. All right, here we have the story of houses and homes. And this is a Ladybird Achievements book by Richard Bowood. And I just been sort of slowly picking up some of these, the old original Ladybird books, as and when I see them in charity shops. And kind of like I'm not collecting them specifically, but if if I see them, I tend to buy one, you know. Then we have Herodotus, The Madness of Cambyses. This is uh, Penguin Little Black Classic number 78. Weaving factual account with colourful myth, the father of history tells of the psychotic Persian king and his fateful death. And yes, he was quite psychotic. There was one point at which he shot a man's son in, just in front of the man, just to like demonstrate a point uh, with his bow and arrow. Uh, there was also there was a bit in there I found quite interesting about... Um, like this, where he'd basically, he'd ordered this military expedition and it hadn't gone well and they ran out of food so they had to draw lots and basically they ate one in ten of the of the men. So that was kind of bleak. Um, but yeah, four out of five, maybe even 4.25 out of five, very interesting, would recommend. Here we have Five Go Down Under and this is one of the Enid Blyton for Adults books. Uh, the, the rest of them that I've read so far have been written by Bruno Vincent, but this was Sophie Hamley and it was, you know, fun enough. The famous five go off to Australia. I think I prefer the Bruno Vincent ones, but possibly just because in my head he's kind of the voice of it. They do, they are quite consistent between the two different authors, so that's not so much a problem. It's just that I've read about six of these now, so it was strange to read one by someone else. But um, yeah, in, enjoyed it enough. Probably like 3.75 out of 5 for that. And then we have The Iron Man by Ted Hughes, and this is a Faber paper-covered edition. And um, I didn't realise this is as popular as it is, because I went on, on my Goodreads to mark it as red or whatever. And loads of people have read it. I think like 70 of my friends, compared to say like 130 for The Shining. So, And The Shining is like obviously pretty well known. So that kind of surprised me. But um, yeah, I did enjoy it. I gave it like a 4 out of 5, pretty good little, little read for kids. Um, and then the only other things to update you on quickly are Sleeper, Out in the Cold by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. This is basically about a secret agent who's kind of investigating, um, like, they think there's another, there's a double agent basically, and there's a guy who's in a coma as well, hence Sleeper. Uh, one of the characters also has this power where basically he doesn't feel pain, so he absorbs pain and then can like deal it out to other people. So it's kind of superhero-ish, but it's also quite noir. I'm enjoying it enough so far. It's probably like a, probably a 3.5 to be honest, but um, that's quite good for me for a superhero thing because I don't like them very much. And then I'm also reading Bag of Bones by Stephen King, and I'm up on page about 200 or something. I'm not really enjoying it, so that's why I've basically been having a break from it and reading a shorter book each day, like, you know, Ted Hughes or whatever, or the famous Five for Adults book. And then after that, I'll just read another 50-odd pages of King and then, like, slowly chipping away at it like that. But uh, I will get there. One other thing to mention here as well is The Vibrant Workplace by Dr. Paul White. So this is uh, one of the books that I write kind of 2,000 word summaries of for a client. So it basically involves going through the book, picking out the highlights and, you know, you've got to kind of condense each each chapter into a paragraph. So I normally choose one thing from the paragraph, the, from the chapter that jumps out and write about that. So yeah, so uh, the, other, the other thing is uh, I'm making Satan as well. Um, it's just bubbling away and... Uh, I'll, I'll show you the end result, I guess, when I get there. So yeah, all right, peace. So I made Irish potato stew with seitan, with homemade seitan, and it looks delicious.
Super fun. All right, I'm watching Retsapure. They watch people play video games and commentate over their commentary. So I have some updates for you. Uh, you may remember that I was reading Bag of Bones by Stephen King. Yeah, I've decided to turn that into my bedtime book because I'm just not enjoying it. So 25 pages a day is quite manageable and will actually, I'll probably enjoy reading it more than I would have done if I continued to force myself, you know. So I switched that out with my actual bedtime book, which was this Shadows on the Tundra by Dalia Grunkovisute. I don't know if I pronounced that right at all. Um, and basically I was really enjoying this, so much so that I, I'd rather read this than The King, you know. So I've just finished reading this. I'm going to read you the blurb here because this gives you a, a really good idea of what it's about. An extraordinary piece of international survival literature joining the likes of Primo Levi and Anne Frank. In 1941, 14-year-old Dalia Grunkovisute and her family are deported from their native Lithuania to a labour camp in Siberia. As the strongest member of her family, the girl submits to 16 hours a day of manual labour. At the age of 21, Dalia escapes the gulag and returns to Lithuania. She writes her memories on scraps of paper and buries them in a glass jar in the garden, fearing they might be discovered by the KGB. They are not found until 1991, four years after her death. This is the story Dalia Grinkovisute buried. The immediacy of her writing bears witness not only to the suffering she endured, but also to the hope that sustained her. It is a, Lithuan it is a Lithuanian tale that, like its author, beat the odds to survive. This is by, published by Perrin Press as well. I was actually sent this for free to review. It was fantastic. 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, I mean, if you're into, if, or if you're interested in that kind of literature, you should definitely read this for sure. Then I also finished reading Sleeper, Out in the Cold by Edward Baker and Sean Phillips. This is a graphic novel, or, or essentially actually really a bind up of comics. Probably give this like a 3.5 out of 5. The artwork was really good, the story is quite good, some like hilarious bits of dialogue as well. Also some really dark bits, like this one bit where somebody put a cigarette out in somebody's eye. And uh, the main character, um, like he can't feel pain but he can like store up the pain that he receives and then inflict on other people as like a superpower so like when he's having sex him and the girl he's having sex with are like cutting each other with razor blades and like he's like she's crazy because I don't feel pain but she does feel pain and she still gets off on it so yeah trigger warnings and, and all that stuff but um yeah it was it was all right uh, and so I'm now reading every part of the animal by Duncan Ralston and this is for Tartan Danes Indie read along. This is basically like a short sort of thriller novella, basically about this woman and her son. She's very overprotective of them. They live out in the sticks, and um, their lives have been sort of thrown into uproar by the arrival of a uh, like a social media influencer pop star into their town. So uh, yeah, there is no limit to what a mother will do to protect her child. Very interesting. So I will report report back on that soon. But that's where I'm at. I'm in a bit of a reading funk, I guess, at the moment. It's not that I'm not reading. I'm just not really enjoying what I'm reading. So, I have a secret plan. I'm going to film Biggie Chooses My TBR once he wakes up. So, yeah, maybe the cat will help out. We'll see. All right, see you in a bit. It smells amazing in here. And it's because I've been making my own homemade low-fat onion rings. Oh, look at these beauties. Yes, I need to give them a quick flip. It's Davey 504 and look, my onion rings are ready. Oh, oh my God, they look amazing. So these are hoisin tofu mustard wraps. Yum, and lettuce. Oh, you're, oh, it is way too close.
it's lunchtime and here we have the chef in her natural habitat. How long did this little feast take you to prepare? Oh, well, it's taken me um, up to about a good part of 40 minutes. A good part of 40 yeah. minutes, and yeah. I've made everything. Yeah, and while you were doing that, I was just talking to your housemate, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah bumming. That'll be a great outcome, excellent thing for people to hear me say as I. Uh, it has been covered with its breadcrumbs and is ready to go in the oven, but I spilled peppercorns everywhere. The finished product. Look at that. Let's put some in bowls. The finished product. Mine is the one with Szechuan peppers on. Lovely. So I've done this thing in my bedroom. This is my uh, like nighttime TBR pile for my bedtime books. Um, these are ones that I tend to prefer to read in like 25 minute chunks maybe. Well, 25 pages is what I read. And uh, yeah, some of them, once I start them, they turn out to be really good and then I move them back over to my main book. So yeah. Okay, all right, it is Sunday. Uh, Sunday the 5th of May. Um, I am back in High Wycombe after going to see Bex in Oxford. Um, she was thinking about coming back to stay with me here in Wycombe, but she's still kind of recovering after our, our operation. So, um, so I've headed back by myself because I've obviously got to make sure the cat's okay. So I'm doing a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of work, a little bit of productivity, a little bit of booktube, of course, and doing that. And then I might go back to Oxford tomorrow. I'm not sure, but if not, I'm probably going to go to the open mic in Maidenhead at the Anchor. So, uh, so yeah, um, in terms of what I got up to this weekend, so by the time I went to bed last night at two in the morning, I'd been up for 32 hours, I think. Um, we, I went obviously to Oxford and then met up with Bex. So we went to some shops and went around the market for a little bit. Um, and then I nipped into Bex's work to use the toilet, um, did that. And then got some food, went back to her place for a bit. And then we went to a little music festival called the Day of the Dead at a pub called the Isis. Uh, it was all right. It was all rock and roll music, which I'm kind of a fan of. But after a while, all the bands start to sound a bit samey, you know. Uh, it was also fifteen pounds to get in each, uh, and then we bought. It was two veggie burgers and some chips for thirteen pounds for the lot of them. But the veggie burgers was were literally stale buns with two vegan sausages in, like no vegan butter or anything like that <laughs> like just dry hard bread with a salad and then a tiny tiny bowl of chips so that wasn't the best but um you know the music was all right then we went back and we watched uh, churchill's secret agents which is like a reality show about basically these people are being trained using the same uh trainings that they used for soes which i can't remember what it stands for now but um those were like regular people who acted as secret agents during the war you know so that was really interesting uh and then went to sleep and then had a lie in today, and then we made that really delicious food, that uh, brock cauliflower, brock cauliflower cheese. That was delicious, and uh, just chilled for a bit. And then, yeah, then I headed home, and now I'm here. So I've got a couple of books to update you on. Only two. So I finished reading Miss Brill by Catherine Mansfield, Penguin Little Black Classic number 72. Vanity and creeping loneliness permeate these three short stories by the modern master of the form. And uh, I did enjoy these, I'm gonna be honest, because I read most of these last night while I was kind of drunk, I, I don't really remember them in any great detail, but I do remember how they made me feel and I did enjoy reading them. I gave them like a, a 3.5 or a 3.75 out of five, and I would like to read some more Catherine Mansfield in the future. Mm. Okay, and then I also read uh, Need You Dead by Peter James. So this was one of Biggie's picks for the uh, video I did of uh, my cat picks, my TBR, which will be out or may be out by the time you're watching this. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'll read you the blurb of this one because the problem with Peter James's books, they, they're all called like Looking de Good Dead, Need You Dead, etc. So they all sound kind of the same, so it can be hard to tell whether you've read it or not. Some killers are closer than you think. Lorna Belling, desperate to escape the marriage from hell, falls for the charms of a man who promises her the earth. But, as Lorna soon finds, life seldom follows the plans you've made. A chance photograph on a client's mobile phone changes everything for her. When the body of a woman is found in a bath in Brighton, Detective Superintendent Roy Grace is called to the scene. At first it looks like an open and shut case with a clear prime suspect. Then other scenarios begin to present themselves, each of them tantalisingly plausible, until, in a sudden turn of events, the case becomes more twisted and dangerous than Grace could ever have imagined. Now, I must admit, I kind of saw the direction the plot was going to take, um, kind of before it got to that point, because there was like a lot of misinformation, and I was like, 
This is so kind of heavy handed. You know, he's so trying to convince us that this is the truth, that I think this is the truth, and I was correct. My hunch was correct, like uh, Columbo. But uh, also, there were some things that I predicted would happen which didn't happen, which I assume. Because of the way they were done, I think they'll probably be addressed in later books. So with these books, you don't necessarily need to read them in order, like each book can kind of be a standalone just for the case. Sorry, I've got hair going in my face. Um, but it does work better overall if you read them all in order, because then you get like, there's individual cases for each book, but then there's some like overarching storylines as well that happen in the background. So um, yeah, I would recommend reading them in order, but they are very good, the Roy Grace books. Uh, I gave that a four out of five. And now I've picked up another biggie pick, which is The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. And I'm literally on page four, so I can't tell you too much about it. Uh, go on, I'll read you the blurb of that as well. The text message arrives in the small hours of the morning. I need you. Isa drops everything, takes her baby daughter and heads straight to Sultan. She spent the most significant days of her life at boarding school on the marshes there, days which still cast their shadow over her. Isa and her three best friends used to play the lying game, competing to convince people of outrageous stories. Now, after 17 years of hiding the truth, something terrible has been found on the beach. The friend's darkest secret is about to come to light. And then I find it hilarious that right underneath that, I could not put this book down, says Reese Witherspoon. Yes, that great literary cri critic Reese Witherspoon. Okay, so apparently I forgot to say in the last bit of footage I took, but I also read O Cruel Alexis by Virgil. This is Penguin Little Black Classic number 76. The pastoral verse steeped in wit and nostalgia from one of ancient Rome's greatest poets. Unfortunately, I just didn't really enjoy it. I mean, I gave it like a 2.5 out of 5. And I appreciate that, you know, Virgil is this, I mean, he's... He's an icon, you know, he's um, really well known as, a, as one of the, like, the antiquity's great authors. But um, yeah, I just didn't enjoy it. But I did say in my review, I think part of that is because really I could have done with like an introductory essay or some extra context of some kind, rather than just, just it being just presented, because I, I didn't really know what to, to make of it. I'm going to read you some. With Syracusan verses Arthelea first, thought fit to play, nor blush to live among the woods. When I was singing kings and battles, Cynthius pulled my ear in admonition. A shepherd, Titurus, should feed his flock fat, but recite a thin-spun song. I now, for you'll have many eager to recite your praises, Varus, and compose unhappy wars, will meditate the rustic muse on slender reed. I sing to order, yet if any read this too, if any love beguiled, Varus, our tamarisks will sing of you, each grove of you, nor any page, please Phoebus, more than that headed by Varus's name. So yeah, I mean, it's very pretty, but I don't know what it means, basically. Or like who any of these, you know, mythic characters are which I kind of need to to have that context really so yeah apparently I forgot to film a bunch of these things I don't know if I mentioned but I finished reading Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War this was a four out of five it was great this was for Todd and Danes indie read along and finally I also finished Isa Chandra Moscovich appetite for reduction 125 fast and filling low-fat vegan recipes so I've said it before but I'll clarify again here basically I consider a cookbook to be read once I, when I get them I go through them I make a list of all the recipes I want to try and then once I've finished trying all of those recipes that's when the cookbook is complete this one I gave like a three out of five to it wasn't very good to be honest like the recipes do what they say on the tin they're low-fat vegan recipes but they weren't particularly tasty and I think you, you know, with vegan food especially, I think it's easier to make a low-fat recipe that tastes good. And then also there are like things like curries, which are under 500 calories, but only if you don't have them with rice or chips or anything else. And it's like, I don't, I don't just want curry. Like I'll have curry and like wholemeal brown rice, but even then, that if that puts the calorie count up or whatever. Uh, but with that said, I'm not. I mean, this isn't really for me anyway, it's more for Bex because she's on a low-fat diet. But that's not particularly about the calories either. I don't care how many calories there are. It just has to be low in fat. <laughs> so, I don't know. Because of that, it was kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, it was it was alright. Alright, I think I finally finished catching up with the videos, that, with the book reviews that I thought I'd done and I hadn't done. So yeah, alright. So yeah, uh, that brings me up to date now, and as it's a uh, Sunday and I have gone on for far enough, I think that seems like a, a good place to end this. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.